Okay, so I'm going to be talking about 12D and GIS and specifically what we've been doing at uh, Bundaberg Regional Council in recent times. A bit about Bundaberg just to start with. So population 98,000, we're expecting that to grow to 130,000 by 2031. We have 6,500 square kilometres of geographic area and our total infrastructure asset value is just over $2 billion. So I presented here at the 2010 conference and at that stage we were early on in our implementation of uh, FDO, Feature Data Object Technology. Uh, basically that's open source software that's been built into uh, version 10, 12D model. And there's various FDO providers, so Lee just went through them before. We use Esri Arc SDE to connect to, uh, and also the WMS. But as you can see, there's MySQL, SDFs, uh, Shapes, we use that quite a fair bit as well. Um, and the web feature service is pretty handy. So we run Esri Arc GIS, and for those of you who don't know what ArcGIS is, it's just an integrated family of GIS software products. It's our council's corporate geographic system. And uh, we specifically run ArcSDE and we wanted to connect 12D model into that. So we wanted on-demand access to all of that information, both for vector and all the raster data as well. So there were four key things that we were trying to achieve when we started out on this project and the first was the single point of truth. We didn't want multiple sources of information which breeds redundancy. We wanted a central data store in Arc SDE. We wanted to process the data once but use it in many places and that's an absolutely critical concept. And we wanted direct access to all the geospatial data, all from 12D. So this is a schematic of the GIS architecture. To prevent any brain hemorrhages, we're not going to go into that in detail. But basically we've got ArcSDE 9.3 geodatabases which sit on SQL Server 2005. We've got two of those, uh, one in the Bagara office, which is where I work, and one in the Bundaberg office as well. The vector data we're connecting to is over one terabit, and that includes our LiDAR point clouds and the uh, raster data sets is, um, is steadily growing. It's up just over two terabits, but it grows on a yearly basis. So then we've got our design and survey users, and uh, we're using the FDO provider to connect to Arc SDE uh, from survey and design, and also out in the field using 12D field. We started out just originally wanting to import the data to 12D, so we were using the web mapping service to access all our aerial imagery, and we were using the ArcSDE for all our vector data, so cadastral parcels, water and wastewater, our sewers, uh, stormwater, infrastructure, all our planning scheme information, any data actually in our corporate web mapping system. I suppose in recent times we've been working on things like spatial view. So we worked out a way that we could we could uh, tap into even more intelligence in our organisation and we connected Arc SDE to our council's corporate asset management system. So we use uh, Ascetic My Data which sits in an SQL database and we made a link um, in SQL. And now that provides intelligence in, in uh, not only thousands but literally tens of thousands of attributes for all our assets. And any asset data that's reflected in bioasset offices can be reflected almost instantaneously within 12D. So this is just a diagrammatic representation of the spatial views. We've, on the left, we've got the My Data SQL database that's connected now to, uh, through Arc SDE and then 12D model sitting out on the right so we can import all that data through 12D and, and we can also write it back. I'm just going to go through a couple of the video. So this is a screenshot that I, I've taken. 
This is just going to go through some simple examples. This is adding some aerial imagery using the WMS provider. So under the file I.O. there's a new GIS section there. We set up the servers. You only have to do that once. And then uh, we just select the one we want. So these are all the aerial, aerial imagery that we can access at Bundy. We select some high res stuff, add it to our current view. And it downloads in. And of course, as you zoom in, uh, it'll just keep refreshing. And then what I'm going to show here is adding cadastral parcels. So that's our, our DCDB. It's the same process. So under GIS, we go to download. And we go and find our ArcSDE server. We can add a function name in here. And this is what I call my shopping basket. So the BRC, GIS, um, all these layers here, it's just unlimited, really. We can just grab whatever we want whenever we want it. So we'll go grab our cadaster. You can also add a query, but I'm not going to do that in this example. Just give it a model name. And then we download it. So we've got about 55,000 parcels in our cadastral parcels in our, our um, DCDB. So that's just reading all of those in now. Just finished. And then we can add them in. So that comes across with all the attributes, all our property information, lot plan data. So the spatial views adds further to that. So this is a uh, high res aerial imagery um, by WMS with our cadaster overlaid. I've also brought in some water mains. You might be able to just see them. What I'm going to do here is now uh, access uh, sewer mains using uh, some of the spatial view data. And I'm going to query it in. So this time around, I want to bring in only uh, those sewer mains with a diameter of 150 millimetres. So as you can see here, these are all the attributes now straight from our asset management system. I'm just going to pick diameter. And you've got multiple um, operators. So we've got Boolean operators, math operators, comparisons. Just going to do it equal one is to 50. This is uh, unlimited, really. It's the type of queries you can run is comes down to how, how creative you want to be with them. I'm also going to run a chain here. So we can run chains at the end, and that chain's just going to convert the style of the data to our uh, string naming uh, and model naming convention and line style types, etc. So that's now pulling in and searching for every sewer main in the Bundaberg Regional Council area with a diameter of 150 mil. That's finished, so we just add that in. Here they are there. Then we can just go and do a, um, an inquiry on the attributes. And it doesn't only bring in just that 150 mil diameter, it brings in all the attributes. So uh, everything from our asset management system is, is displayable through here, including pipe diameter and invert levels. OK, so we've also been working on uh, we wanted to really push the boundaries a little bit further with this stuff, so we've been working on write, edit, and updating data from 12D to ArcSD as well. So what we generally do is we take our tin boundaries from survey, because everyone wants to know where we've got survey detail survey in our region. Um, we write those tin boundaries off um, as survey areas in our GIS using this system. Project locations, where we're doing capital works, we can write that from 12D. Uh, and it's all instantly viewable on our corporate web mapping system. And if we want it to be, it can be accessible instantaneously on our corporate, uh, on our uh, public web mapping system as well. So I'm just going to show another demo here. I just want to go through a couple simple examples and adding some strings. So this is a survey in one of the coastal parts of our region couple of centimedians there in the middle of the road. What we're going to do is uh, use the multi-pick. By the way, whoever 
worked out this multi-pick tool, it's fantastic. So we're just gonna go select some lipper curbs here from the survey. And I want to um, share that with, with the GIS, so. I'll just select the strings I want. Function name. And I'm gonna go and find the uh, ArcSDE server. And select the feature class in ArcSDE. And add it in. That's done. So that'll be now instantly on our corporate web, web mapping system. We can go in and delete strings as well. And by the way, you need really good relationships with your GIS people to work through this. this is, there's a lot of relationship building behind all this. So uh, in this case, we're just going to select the model. So there's are three strings that I, I just added in. Now I'm just going to go delete them back out. Once again, we just have to select the feature class that we want to delete it out of. Delete, we get one single, do you want to do this? We don't get the two. We go yes, and then it deletes it back out. So that's now gone out of ArcSDE. So when you're adding strings in, you're also adding any attributes as well. So flood modeling. So we've been doing lots of flood modeling after the floods, big flood recovery we're working through. And one of the t ways we're, we're using this technology is our point clouds for LiDAR sit in ArcSDE. So when we're wanting to um, use 2Flow or XP Swim 2D to, to do our, our models, we often don't want the one meter grid data. So a lot of um, the point clouds are, are one meter grid by default. Uh, and we want to resample it. So this is an example where I'm resampling out to 10 meters. And what I'm doing is I'm querying in the LiDAR for that particular polygon area. And then I'm going to run a chain. And that chain is going to resample that data set to a 10 meter grid, write out a DEM file of that. And it's also using the new V10 um, tin grid. Uh, that's been spoken about several times today and yesterday. They're very good for um, for LiDAR data. So that's, um, that's read that LiDAR data in and populated a new view for me, just called it 10 meter DEM, and that's a grid tin of, of the resampled data. So to give you a bit of understanding of the speed with some of this in LiDAR, we can suck in using the 64-bit um, Bigfoot about 18 and a half square kilometers of LiDAR one meter grid in about eight and a half minutes. We can push that right up to between 30 and 40 square kilometers on the fly until, um, until you hit the Windows 64-bit memory limits. But once you're pushing 30 or 40 square kilometers of one meter data, that's, that's, that's still a lot. So then we thought, well, we want to go further again with this. So uh, I'm a big uh, Android fan, Android phone, and I thought, well, why don't we, um, why don't we uh, see what we can do in the mobile world? So we now run ArcGIS apps for smartphones and tablets. We can um, iPhones, iPads, iPods, Windows phones, Androids. I'm, I'm running Android um, version 4 on a HTC phone. Um, We can write from 12D, like I've just shown you, and then instantly display it on our on our phones, anywhere, anywhere in the region where we've got our um, next G coverage, of course. If we just play this, I couldn't work out how, how to do a video snapshot. Apparently, your Android has to be rooted. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I could only take snapshots of the photos, so I've just put a, put them all together here. So, this is um, the Arc, ArcGIS app on the phone. And this is an area of Bundaberg, uh, coastal area of Bagara. We're just going to zoom in here. And uh, we've got map contents and tools in the app. We're just going to click on that. We've got all the layers available to us. So anything that we want, once again, it's like a shopping basket. So there's our sewer, um, water mains, stormwater utilities. has all our attributes. And this is coming direct from our asset system. So there's literally tens and tens of thousands of these including all our invert levels. 
and the app has GPS. So you just whack your GPS on the app and you can just GPS around and find all this information. We can add in our contours, see what information we have there. I was talking about before our project location. So on the phone, um, you know, we could whack on our GPS on the phone. And when we write the project locations of our capital works in, we can display it all through the phones and view what the project numbers are. So it's just sort of, it's not there and then we write it from 12D and then it's there and then it's instantly on everyone's phones. So, um, and it really is as simple as that. It's actually a lot faster on the phone, but if anyone wants to have a close look at it, I've got it with me, so. I, was, I suppose I just want to close in saying that 12D can't, it can't be all to everyone. So you have to be thinking holistically about what you're trying to achieve with this sort of stuff. 12D is a solid design and survey application and always will be, I think, but it shares data with the GIS. It's not the GIS. So you shouldn't go about trying to replicate ArcGIS in 12D. It's, it's not the right approach. You have to focus on interoperability. Uh, that's a key along with the single point of truth. And as well, you need good relationships with GIS and IT. I've had to do an enormous amount of work on that, but we're very fortunate to have um, a very good um, working relationship with our GIS people. They're directly in the office next to us. Uh, and with their assistance and our IT people, we've been able to bring this to fruition. And along with the support uh, from 12D, which has been excellent, mm -hmm. thank you for that once again, Lee, but Richard Stolier, uh, He's been a fantastic asset for us in, in getting all this together, but um, it's, uh, it's a fantastic productivity tool for us now, and, and uh, yeah, that's what we've been doing at Bundy. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dwayne. Uh, so you can see the things our beta customers have been working on from the last conference are all now come to uh, fruition.